Some countries have gold, while others have oil, but Cape Verde has tourism. In this video, we will visit Santa Maria, the epicenter of this booming industry where foreign guests outnumber the locals. Sal, the name of this island, means salt in Portuguese, and Santa Maria was founded in 1830 to help produce this once precious commodity. By its heyday, the port here exported 30,000 tons of salt annually, mainly to Brazil, but this industry collapsed in 1887 when the Brazilian government imposed heavy tariffs on imported salt to protect their domestic producers. How's that? It's for people to, to the people live there, working in the Salt Lake a long time ago. With its economy destroyed, Sal quickly fell into total destitution, much like the rest of Cape Verde. But Sal Island had some advantages that most of the others didn't. Its land is extremely flat, ideal for building large airport runways. It also has tremendous beaches, natural harbors, and conspicuously blue water. In the late 1960s, a group of Belgian investors built Cape Verde's first resort, called Hotel Morabeza, here in Santa Maria, and a whole new industry was born, tourism. I start my walk on the promenade near the shore. First, we will head to downtown Santa Maria before returning to this stunning beach. Most of these merchants are immigrants from West African countries like Senegal, Nigeria, and Guinea. Here in Santa Maria, the local Cape Verdeans seem to play a relatively small role in their own economy. The grocery stores are owned by the Chinese, and Europeans own everything else from the massive resorts, industrial tuna fishing, and what is left of local industry. That said, Cape Verdeans are quite nationalistic and keenly aware of these dynamics. Many believe that their own emigration mainly to Europe and the U.S., is causing them to lose control of their homeland. However, they don't seem to hold any resentment towards Western investors.
The Cape Verdean government has concentrated almost all the country's all-inclusive resorts on this one island. And here in Santa Maria, you will notice that white Europeans seem to outnumber the locals by around 10 to 1. And this isn't even the high season, which runs from June to September. Club Kalema. Looks like a strip club. We'll check that out tomorrow night. Maybe with a hidden camera, we'll see. Cape Verde receives tourists from all over Europe, but the biggest group comes from the United Kingdom. The Brit sees Sal as an alternative to the usual hotspots like southern Spain or the Canary Islands. Flights from cities like London and Manchester can be had for under 500 pounds round trip. I stopped by one of these restaurants and ordered lobster. It cost 3,600 escudos, which is around 32 euros or 36 dollars. If you thought Cape Verde was a cheap place to vacation, think again. Thank you. After eating, I take a walk through the back streets of Santa Maria. This is presumably where the local people lived at some point. But even though it's the middle of the day, the streets are lifeless. In reality, Santa Maria is a fake city. 
Almost all the local people actually live on Sal's other major city, Espargos, which is the capital of the island. They commute to Santa Maria to work in the shops and hotels, and I am told they earn around $300 per month, which is surprisingly low considering how expensive things are in this country. But the people are not poor. Cape Verde's currency, the escudo, is pegged to the euro at a rate of 1,000 escudos to 9 euros. This currency peg gives the country a lot of economic stability and a much more sophisticated financial system than the typical West African country. Cape Verde has a very reasonable annual inflation rate of less than 2% this year, and 25-year mortgages can be had for single-digit interest rates. The government also provides many services such as public health care and housing in some cases. I stop at one of the high-end restaurants near the beach. As I mentioned earlier, most large properties like this are owned by European investors. There is a large map on the wall with flags marking all the territories ever controlled by the Portuguese Empire, from Cabo Verde to Socotra, Goa, and Macau. Let's take a walk across the Santa Maria beach. This is Santa Maria Beach, the three-mile strip of land that gave this island and Cape Verde as a whole its name as a tourist destination. The beach is famous because of its spectacularly blue ocean water 
which is relatively calm and ideal for swimming and water sports. Many of the Europeans like to sunbathe topless. While this is technically not allowed in Cape Verde, no one makes a big fuss about it or pays much attention. After all, everyone has nipples. Some are just bigger than others. Now we come across the famous pier of Santa Maria. Although this area is almost completely taken over by tourists, some local life still remains. Here, some kids are fishing. They use chopped up offal as bait. <laughs> 